Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, and I'll be your host for today's show. Today, we're going to be talking about finding your best role as a board member, whether you're a new director or a seasoned director. And joining me as someone with some interesting background and experience is Cindy Fernelli, who's a board member with Triple Point Venture Growth and also professionally managed portfolios. Welcome back, Cindy. Thank you. It's so great to be back in a new role and to see everybody and to see you. So uh, I'm really pleased to be here. Thank you. Yes, a very new role because you were one of the experts on the show for years talking specifically about audit related topics, but also some other things about Wall Street. But here you are now sitting on corporate boards. And that's what we want to talk to you about is, is some of your experiences. So um, you know, you were familiar when you walked into your first boardroom because, you know, you were very familiar with boards and all of their responsibilities at the time. But when you when you went in on your first board, what surprised you um, either, you know, that you weren't expecting or, you know, just something that you weren't pre prepared for that ended up occurring after the first couple of meetings? Well, you, you mentioned familiarity. And you would think, yes, I would have been very familiar with the boardroom and how boards operate. And I was, but not from that role, not as a board participant. So the biggest surprise for me was how different it really is from being, we hear a lot about the difference between management and board, and I'll get to that in a second but also being an advisor or an expert. So that was the role that I played, right? A corporate governance expert, if you will. And that's even different than the management role versus the board role. And so we all hear that adage that a board member should be uh, noses in, hands out. Uh, and that's true, but that's hard to do. Nobody tells you how to do that. And so uh, that was to me, the biggest surprise was that transition. I don't wanna say it was really the difficulty of it, but the, the difference, how different it was to play a new role. So um, you were lucky in your first board to be onboarded uh, prior to the pandemic. So you went through a normal onboarding process, but then with your second board, that was actually during the pandemic, which I assume made it a virtual onboarding, which sounds challenging in its own right. Either way, when you join a board, you're trying to sort of read, you know, not only the company culture, but more specifically the board culture. You're trying to understand your peers and who brings what to the table. Um, you're sort of looking, where do I fit in? So can you talk about how you maneuvered in those early meetings, read the room and sort of find, found your space on the boards that you decided to go on. Well, and that gets back to that how question that we just talked about. How do you transition from being in a management or advisor role into a board role? And you hit on it in that you have to read the room and you have to see what your peers, your board peers, what's the culture in the boardroom? And two things I would say about that. First of all, are you a new board member or are you a replacement board member? So on my one board on TPVG, I came in as a new board member. They added an additional board member to uh, adhere to the California law requiring uh, public companies registered in California to have a woman on the board. So that I was a brand new board member stepping into an already gelled, if you will, board. Whereas on my PMP board, I was replacing, I and another gentleman were replacing two other board members who were retiring. So different dynamics in that. So I would, a new board member should think about that. Um, and that might impact how you fit in and, and read the culture. You know, I got some advice. The second thing I was going to say is I, I got some advice um, as I was retiring and thinking about board service. And somebody told me that 
your first year of board service, you should not speak or participate or ask any questions. You should just observe. And I have to tell you, I strongly disagree with that advice. I do not think that that's necessary, nor do I think that that's advisable. Do you want to tread cautiously and try to get the feel of your fellow board members, particularly if you have joined a board virtually? Yes, you do. Um, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't participate. They have brought you on for a specific skill set and, and experience that you bring to the table. And I think the expectation from your, your board members and management and investors, frankly, is that you participate right away. You bring that expertise and that skill set to the table immediately. So cautious, as, as you know, TK and your viewers who have been uh, with me before, I, I'm not shy. Um, I, I tend to speak my mind and um, I, I tend to be pretty bold in my statements. And I didn't change my personality. I maybe dialed it back a little bit at the beginning to understand how everybody interacted with one another. But I disagree that you can't participate or you shouldn't participate at the very beginning. I think you should. So, um... Before you joined, this is a great segue, what you just said to my next question. So before you joined any of your boards or before your first meeting, did the board chair or the CEO have any discussion with you about um, sort of what they expect from a directors or from you specifically or why they picked you as a candidate? Um, um, or was that something that you initiated or was there no conversation with respect to that? Well, as you might imagine, because it's me, there was a conversation uh, because I initiated it. Not to say that they, that the uh, CEO and the board chair wouldn't have initiated it, but um, I was sure during my interview process to ask those questions. You know, what role am I filling? What, I know what my expertise is. What expertise do I have that you make me an attractive candidate for your board. And we talk a lot about the matrix, the board matrix. And I think maybe it gets a, a little over talked about and people might be a little tired of talking about the matrix, but it is important. And by the matrix, I mean, you know, most boards when they're looking to fill a role will, will figure out where do we have gaps in our expertise? What, what skill sets do we need to bring to the boardroom to make us more effective? And then they recruit candidates against that, that matrix. And so understanding where you fit on that matrix, whether you talk about it that way or not, but understanding what skill sets the board thinks that you're bringing to the table is important. Not to say that you're not going to weigh in on other issues, but for instance, I bring a regulatory corporate governance background, and that's what the two boards that I'm on value my expertise. That's the expertise that they value. And knowing that is helpful, I think, when you go into your early board meetings, your first couple of board meetings, because it'll give you a little more confidence to speak on those issues, um, because that's what you're there for. And so um, you definitely have to have that conversation, whether it's a formal conversation and part of your onboarding process, whether it's part of your interview um, process, or maybe it's more informally where you just call the CEO and uh, or the board chair and talk to him or her about expectations. Um, with, on my TPVG board, we just brought on two additional board members to again comply with the California mandate that there be three. Uh, diverse board members on every board. And um, I took it upon myself. I know the CEO and the board chair talked to the two new members, um, but I called them before our first meeting just to talk to them about, did they have any questions? What's the, um, you know, how we operate? Are we formal? Are we casual? Um, that kind of thing. Frankly, and this is going to sound silly, but it's the first time we've had an in-person board meeting in a long time. What to wear? What are people going to wear? Um, uh, just so that you feel confident walking into the room and prepared to offer your expertise and not worrying about the softer side of things, if you yeah. will. That's really nice because I think if a corporate secretary doesn't have that kind of conversation, 
Um, I think it's even more comfortable to have a fellow director, you know, have that. So um, that's probably a good tip for a lot of people if they want to help a incoming director feel more comfortable. If you're a new board member and don't hesitate to call one of your fellow board members um, that you met through your, your interview process, if there's somebody that you clicked with or had a good conversation with, hopefully all of them you did, but if there was someone that you had an affinity with right off the bat, call if they don't call you and just say, hey, well, you know, what can I expect? What's this like? Um, give me some tips. Uh, I think that's whether it's your first time ever being on a board or your first time being on that particular board, I think it's helpful because every board's different. Yeah. So we have some 30 seconds left, but I wanted to ask you, you've already given good little bits of advice uh, during this uh, interview, but I wanted to ask if you had any other advice for both new or existing board members for them finding their best space on the board. Well, we talked about reaching out to individuals, which I think is probably your best bet. But I also would encourage everybody to join or follow or participate in various um, resources that are out there. So you've got the IAB, you've got the Diligent platform that has a ton of information and resources. There's the NACD. I'm involved with an organization called Women Corporate Directors. Just places that you can go to be with fellow board members and ask these questions. And if you can find a group uh, to follow on social media or to attend peer-to-peer um, -peer, uh, get-togethers, gatherings, I highly recommend that because there's nothing like just pulling somebody aside and saying, hey, how do you wrestle with this? Um, how, how did you all deal with this issue? What is the best practice around this particular um, thing that we've got going on in our boardroom? It's invaluable. And so uh, I really commend uh, diligent and the IAB platform for providing those resources. And so hopefully your viewers have found this 10 minutes uh, with us inside the boardroom to be helpful and instructive and informative. Well, Cindy, um, great advice from a great board communicator. And uh, it's really a pleasure for me to have you back um, sort of on the other side of the screen, you know, once again. So thanks for taking the time to join me. Thank you, TK. And that will conclude this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardroom. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. 